Greetings fellow humans, you know me as Iceman Caesar, and this is what's up in the world today. We're going to be talking about who the only true enemy is in life here today, and that's going to lead into a discussion about the ridiculousness of racism. So it's pretty serious stuff, let's not waste any time, get right into it. Uh, the first thing I need to establish is that we have no physical enemies in life. All of our enemies are spiritual. And that goes back to a few of the things I was talking about in the first video about the soul and the body. That we are, our, our true selves is our soul. And our soul, our, thought, our thoughts and everything are only positive. All the negative thoughts and actions are influenced from outside, from Satan and his demons. And so that brings it back to we have no physical enemies, only spiritual. Like all of us, as our souls, we're, we are good and we are positive and we only have thought, positive thoughts and actions. But because of the way life is... Uh, Satan can try and influence us to have negative thoughts and actions and that's why our only enemy is spiritual it's, If we spend and waste our time fighting each other physically, it's nothing is going to be accomplished We're just going to end up killing each other and get, we're not going to get anywhere the, Because the true enemy is Satan no matter even if you have if you fight somebody physically and get rid of them He'll always replace it with another vessel because he's always trying to divide us and get us to spread hate and violence so we always have to remember that our enemies are not physical. Anybody that is do like having spreading negative thoughts or actions physically is being influenced by something outside, by Satan and his demons. So we just have to remember that. And we have to focus on focus our attacks on the spiritual, on Satan and his demons. And if we can successfully successfully defeat them there, then the physical the physical body does not have to have all those negative thoughts and influences. And so that, you know, that leads us into God created all the races and different cultures to give us things to celebrate. But, you know, the, because of our human condition, we, we look at things that are different with fear. And fear leads to hate and violence. So because of that human condition, when we see things that are different, we automatically start to, you know, we, the, fear, the fear creeps up in us and the hate and the violence starts to come out. And it's, it's such a shame because how uninspiring and boring would our world be if all of us were the same, if everybody was all the same race, we only had one culture, I, I mean there was no different, like it wasn't a multicultural world where we just can, we have so many different things to, to bring together and to celebrate and different ways to, to have fun and to gain enlightenment and just to spread just to spread joy and cheer like there's so so much goodness in all these different cultures but we just so much of the time focus on the negativity the hate the violence just the things that divide us when god gave us these things to bring us together just to celebrate help celebrate life and uh, human beings because you know the different cultures and races are the some of the best things about being human it's it's not one of the worst but sometimes with the way we act we, we treat it as though it's the worst. And so now that leads me into, I really believe that every single human being should have to experience a gross anatomy lab. I experienced them in when I was going through college for massage therapy, and it totally changed not only how I understand the body, but just it, any racism that was in me completely died that day. I, at the time, you know, I wouldn't have called myself a racist person, but, you know, I guess my subconscious thoughts, there was, you know, still some racism. Maybe I think I finally kind of understood a little bit about what white uh, privilege is, as they call it. But I'll, I'll, I'll explain that in the story. Uh, so a, a gross anatomy lab is working with cadavers, aka dead bodies. And for us, we needed to see the muscles and the ligaments and the tendons and everything. So all the skin was removed and it was just, everything was everything underneath was there, but all the skin was gone. And there were three bodies that we were working with. And in my head, I guess I kind of just assumed that all three bodies were white. They were white people and that's who we were working with. I mean, it, it wasn't a conscious thought I specifically had, but with, the, with how we were working, I just... I guess I just assumed they were white, but but somebody did ask the question, you know, are these all the same race? And you know, the the instructor from the university that was working with us, they looked through the sheet and they said, no, you know, two of them were white, but one was black. And that just it really blew me away because, you know, they all looked the same. Like there was no way to tell that they were different. And I mean, in my in my brain, I guess they ju I just assumed they were all white. And I guess that is what kind of what white privilege is because of how our you know how. Satan's Illuminati has set the society up for one race to be dominant. 
it's uh, the white privileges, you know, I just, I always have that safety of everything's going to be the same, you know, the same type of people are going to be, I'm, I'll be working with the same race, you know, like this, it's just, I guess that just that feeling of having the same where, you know, like a lot when people of minorities have to deal with that feeling of always feeling different and always feeling, you know, like they're always working with something different and that's where, you know, that's where the human condition comes into and you can get into negative thoughts and and feelings but I guess it gave me a little bit of perspective on uh, white privilege kind of but but you know really it's any racism racism that you have will die when you have a gross anatomy lab because that literally, literally <laughs> once the skin is gone it's all the same underneath I mean to most people if you haven't seen that with your own eyes maybe you just think that's something people say but it, it once you once you work with a cadaver and you see the skin removed and you see that everything underneath is the same you just can't be racist anymore because you realize that the skin is just completely temporary and it is just, it is really has nothing to do, just a, maybe not nothing, but just a small, small part of who you are. I mean, it's just like there's so much going on underneath and in our minds and our hearts and everything. It's just like this, our skin color it should be one of the least, one of the things we le worry about the least, but it's one of the things that, you know, seems to drive conversations and the way people react to other people in certain things so I really feel that you know if as people were growing up in school if we could you know have everyone get the experience of working with in a gross anatomy lab and seeing with your own eyes that everything underneath the skin is different I, I think it would just to racism would die because there's no you just there's no room for it once you see that I mean you know I would like they say it's only skin deep because once the skin is removed we're all the same underneath and that's the thing once the conscious once our consciousness goes back to our souls as our soul I mean we're basically the same and we have we have different faces and we have different strength but really we're all like there is we're all basically the same like we're all the light we're all light and it's you know it's it's there's no there's not real there's not the kind of different races and cultures that we have here on earth that's why the message is always appreciate what you have here on earth appreciate this life because it's not it's not the same anywhere else in any other galaxy in any other universe or, or anything else god has created nothing is the same in this world where everything is tied to physicality everything you can't just flap your arms and fly there has to be physics behind you know flapping your arms for a certain speed and length of time to keep yourself in the air and get yourself in the air like that's the thing it's so tied to the physical realm that you know, we, we, we need to appreciate because that really helps create a lot of the beauty that we have in this world. And, uh, and just, you know, like, that's, it's just the, the race and, uh, race that we've put so much stock into and that we let divide us. It means like absolutely nothing in the grand scheme of things. All it is, is something to help enhance our experience here on earth, but we let it ruin our experience here on earth. So, I mean, we just really need to wake up to the fact that our enemy is not spiritual. Our, en our enemy is not physical. It is spiritual. And that race is just something to celebrate. It's not something to divide us. And, uh, you know, it brings me to another another point. It's like why we have to appreciate this world. It's uh, like, the if, you know, if God just came out and, and you know, prove to every single person hey here I am this I'm I'm real we have an at we know we have a paradise to go to like if he you know prove that he's real and everything we would lose so much beauty that we have in this world like I don't even think we realize it you know that feeling when you're sitting in the house and it's a beautiful day out sun shining you know like just the and like all the birds and the animals are making noise and it's just you know one of those days where you're inside and you think you just have that guilty feeling like I'm wasting a, a great a nice day like this I should be doing something I should be doing something to enjoy it you wouldn't have that if you knew that you had a thousand nice days you wouldn't it wouldn't bother you to wait you know to waste one if you knew that you had an eternity of, of day you know of nice sunny days wouldn't bother you to waste one if you know if you knew for a fact that you'd see your loved one again and they'd be going to paradise and you know it wouldn't this physical death wouldn't be the end would it really would goodbye really bother you that much would would the physical death really you know would you you know some moments and experiences that we go through because we don't want to miss out on and on time with people and stuff would would we let some of those go if we knew we'll see them in paradise that's part of the reason why God has holds himself back because he doesn't want to ruin the beauty of this world and when you get when our consciousness goes back to our souls that's when we'll appreciate 
all the gifts of this world and just how how lucky we were to be able to to be able to live here and just experience this and that's why it's such a shame that we're allowing something like you know race to ruin our experience um, and it's just and you know it goes back to energy hate and violence is such a waste of energy when we could be channeling that into happiness and fun I mean how much better would the world be if happiness and fun those emotions dominated instead of hate and violence everywhere like you know instead of wars we had big you know like fairs and big cultural celebrations and you know things that draw people in from around the world to come celebrate like we really need to try and create a world to where people don't have to be afraid to, to travel around to other countries to experience different cultures and things like that. They don't have to worry about being subjected to the hate and the violence from because they're coming to a place that's different or they're they're not you know coming into uh, you know their race is not not the dominant in that region or something or just you know all, they're not they they're not have to worry about being taken advantage of. So if we if we end all, like if we realize that the negative thoughts. And influences are coming from Satan and his demons. We accept Jesus, get the armor of God. We can cover those connections and those negative thoughts and influences will be gone from us. And we can just focus on creating positive energy like happiness and fun. And, you know, like we can really build a world that those kind of emotions are the dominant ones. But we just, we have to realize that our enemy is not physically spiritual and he's attacking us all the time. And because of our human condition and how when we see things that are different, we respond, we respond with fear, which leads to hate and violence. That's why he chooses race, Satan chooses race as the thing to divide us. It's easy because there is something in our human condition that allows, allows that negative energy to really, really grow once, once we let it and once it gets into us. So, you know, like it's... That is why so many people, like when you see a different race or some uh, somebody of a different race, like immediately negative thoughts and things start going into your head. That's because as soon as we are, as soon as we deal with another somebody of another race, Satan is as sending his demons to look for a negative connection to find, make that bridge and start sending negative influences to try and influence negative, hateful thoughts and actions. And when, unless we know about that, then we it's hard to fight against it. Now, we need to create a world where we don't worry about, when we, when we meet someone, we're not worried about what their race is, we're not worried about what their culture is, we're not worried about what, what country they come from, all we're worried about is the content of their character. That's it. Are they a vessel for good or are they a vessel for evil? That's it. And I mean, you, when, if they're a vessel for good, connect with that person, build fellowship with them, like... It doesn't matter what race or culture or country they come from. If they are a vessel for good and the content of their character is good, then you need to em just embrace that fellowship because, you know, you will not you will not be steered wrong, and you will find just the greatest the greatest parts of life. You will enhance the greatest parts of life. And I mean, it, and I'm not saying that you can in people that are vessels for evil, you condemn them. You pray for them, and you hope that they come back. And they they want to stop being a vessel for evil, and they want to be a vessel for good. But you do, but under no circumstances do you have to sit there and be taken advantage of, or to be hurt, or to be just, or any any negative thing. Like pray for them, be willing to be have your arms open, be ready to turn the other cheek when they're finally you know decided to be a vessel for good. But you know until they are, you have to just. You, you have to connect yourself with people that are living with good content in their character. And as long as you, as long as you, as, as that is your kind of judge for character, then you'll never be steered wrong. You won't be worried. You, the, things like racism and just, it won't creep into your character because you will all only be focused on the content of, uh, only on the content of people's character. <clears throat> yeah, sorry, just kind of, Coming to the end here, but there's a few more points I wanted to make. Um, so yeah, real, um, you know, really, I, if you, uh, for those of you out there that have seen the, the show The Walking Dead, they have kind of three questions they ask new people they meet to make sure that they're on the up and up. And you know, really, you can knock it down to two questions uh, when it comes to when it comes to meeting people. It's basically really simple: Are you a human being, and are you a vessel for good? And if you if uh, the answer to is to, 
If it, sorry. If the answer to both of those questions is yes, then there's no reason why you can't connect with that person and embrace the fellowship. Because if you're a vessel for good, then you'll be connected to God and Jesus, and you'll be living, you'll be doing good things and treating people good and trying to create a better world. And then as long as we're all doing that, then it allows us to be the best version of ourselves and to try and create the best version of this world. <clears throat> And so, yeah, and yeah, basically, so that, just the last point, um, you know, if we're able to slay these spiritual demons and connect to God and Jesus, we can get the armor of God, and that will keep these negative connections closed, and it will help sever the ones that currently exist in us. And it's all, everything, this life, what is the meaning of life? The meaning of life is trying to be the best version of yourself and to try to build the best version of this world. That is, that, that's, you, you can break down life into basically that. Try, just try to be the best version of yourself and try to help build the best version of this world. If we all do that, we're never going to go wrong. There's not going to be any room for negativity, for evil, for hate, for violence. There's not going to be any room for that. Only room for the good, positive things only room to enhance the best parts of life so just remember excuse me just remember to only judge people by the content of their character have your two questions are you a human being are you a vessel for good answer is yes then we're good to go and just you know you can embrace the fellowship and just you know just have have fun and just embrace the fellowship of today because you know, today is a day that the Lord has made, so let us rejoice and be glad. And there's no better way to do that than with the fellowship of our brothers and sisters and all of us in the connection with God and Jesus. So that, I, think I, made my, I think I've made every point I wanted to make. Hopefully I was clear enough. As always, if you have any questions or comments or anything, just leave a comment or get at me on Twitter at Iceman Caesar. <laughs> at Iceman Caesar. Uh, thanks everybody for coming along for the ride. We'll see you soon down the road. Much love and God bless. Peace.